Hey everybody, how you doing? This is Vince Gilligan, the creator of Breaking Bad. And this is, uh, I'm Aaron Paul. I play Jesse Pinkman. Hey, Darla. Hi, I'm Anna Gunn, and I play yeah, Skylar White. I'm Bob Odenkirk, and I yeah. portray the gentleman lawyer, Saul Goodman. <laughs> <laughs> and we have some people joining us in oh, Albuquerque, uh, New Mexico. Sure oh, in Albuquerque, it's Brian Cranston no. and... Melissa Bernstein. Hello, hello, hello. So who wrote this episode? Hey, wait a minute. Where's uh, Peter Gould? Peter Gould yeah. wrote this episode. What's what where, where is he? I, that's a darn good question. He is here in Los Angeles. You know what he's doing? As, as we speak, he is writing episode uh, 515, which is the second to last episode we Ooh. were ever going to have. Oh. oh. So he's busy. Wh wow. Which he's also going to direct. Which he's oh. also going to direct. Wow. He's a fabulous director. He is. And us, uh, as producers, we just demanded a scene early, so perhaps that's keeping him busy. Oh, did? Oh, okay, yeah, Have yeah. you locked oh. him somewhere, Vince? Uh, you You're know pretending what? not to know where he's he is. He's very uh, self-disciplined. Uh, we had a, a lot of fun stuff come, uh, happen in this uh, this past week, uh, an award ceremony and whatnot, and he he uh, uh, elected instead to uh, to be at home writing away, so, yeah. so I appreciate that. I respect that. He directed Problem Dog. In season uh, message, it wasn't paid back. four, four. So yes, great four. episode. Four. You had a great scene in that, Aaron, yeah. with uh, uh, talking about the problem dog, so except that you're really talking about Gail Bedecker. Mm -hmm. And then the got to blow up a car in that one, too, that challenger. Okay. I like this I like this scene, the way it was say? set up. Is that uh, Chris uh, uh, Freehofer? It is. Freehofer, yes. um, who plays a defense attorney. And I love how he, he knows his place. He goes in, he puts on those headphones. He's not hearing any of this conversation at all. It's beautiful. Yeah. And we shot this scene in what was a real prison, too. Yeah. Oh, that's right. And it smelled really, really bad, right? <laughs> that's how you know it's a real prison. <laughs> Do, I've smelled smoke, worse guys. on our show. <laughs> but, um, uh, yeah. <laughs> Who would that be? <laughs> Who or what? I don't want to name names, but... The sewage so, treatment plant of oh, yeah. season that one. That was pretty bad. Oh, I was there for that. That wasn't that bad. Oh, oh it was man. cold at least. Oh, God. That was a chemical factory where uh, where uh, uh, Brian and Aaron, where you guys uh, stole the barrel in season yeah. one. I appreciate what you're saying and all, but the man is dead. Okay, the lab's a hole in the ground. I just don't see it. I've got something new. It's just starting up. It's going to make you whole. Something new. The Fed's looking at you? How? How's my business? Hanging tight to your business. Your family's gonna be fine. You will be made whole. Now, you got my word. You need more? No, oh, Mike. I'm good. Who's next? Uh, that's your choice. Uh, APD's got Martinez across town. McGann's up in Sandoval. Sandia and we had Mike Bataya back in the scene. Yes. Uh, Mike who played Dennis, I believe. Yeah. The, uh, the guy we met last season who was running, uh, seemed to be the manager of the industrial laundry that Gus Fring owned. Now, uh, uh, mm -hmm. Bob, is, is this guy uh, is going to give you a run for your money? Is this guy a better uh, dirty uh, defense attorney than you, you think? Or when... There's no way. Uh -huh. This guy's a patsy. He's. <laughs> uh, he, I'm going to take him out in the second round. He's the grassy knoll <laughs> of, uh, of uh, the grassy knoll guy. <laughs> grassy knoll. The, yeah. no, he doesn't have any flash. He doesn't have any style. That's right. He's not wearing a ribbon. No. Yeah, he clearly doesn't care about those poor people who, who something uh, happened to them. I don't know what. Saul doesn't know either. <laughs> oh, that's right. He's moving back in. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. It's headstrong. The bold and the beautiful. <laughs> well, here's the bold. Eric, uh, beautiful's coming. And beautiful's about to come in. There's a few choice items in his box. Hmm. Finally. I think I'll put keep that on the top forever. of the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what that'll be a wrong? good place to keep it. Yeah, <laughs> what could possibly go wrong? <laughs> uh, are, you, are you moving back? How in? long does a scene like this take to shoot? Do uh, you guys remember? Was this one an uh, hour or two, you think? Uh, what do you think, Brian? Oh, no. God, oh, this is probably three hours. It's time. Okay. There's a lot of movement. It's a lot of different angles. A lot of different... 
do you uh, really? And then, of course, Anna has to remember her lines, which is always a problem. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I have cue cards set up on Brian's forehead. <laughs> <laughs> That's, right. That's why, actually, the reason he had to first shave his head, actually. <laughs> yeah. I do like that he so swipes would... the bras away yeah. in order to put his stuff Push in the bras drawer. out of the way. Those are my own bras, so I felt okay to do it. This is great. Lavelle oh, look at these two. Oh, Lavelle facing <laughs> yeah. each other. So great. I just love being around that guy. Yeah, here? these two are great together. The three Jonathan. Us, we're the three amigos. All There's a man. Three, three amigos. amigos. Amigo. Well, that's like a pep talk. Mike knows the business. He knows distributors. Mike's. Okay. I really do love the clothes. Okay. The Sa Saul's sartorial like splendor. Oh yeah. Really great. I, and you letting us use your real clothes from real life, Bob, is just. That's a, a, a you're, gift. You're a prince of a man. I want people yeah. to see. I want people to see what I've got. <laughs> I fly to Africa every year and pick right. out the <laughs> brightest colors. <laughs> no making. secrets in his closet. Fly down to India. <laughs> go to the factories. Very good. So Adam Bernstein directed this episode. And uh, Adam is, uh, I think Adam, when, it, when it's all said and done, I guess either Michelle or Adam will have the most directed Michael episodes of Breaking Bad. Wow. And I'm sorry. Yeah, I think he'll be in the second position, I would imagine, yeah, to Michelle. Yeah. Okay, that's true. And I'm sorry he's not here for this, but uh, wonderful guy. And uh, he just, he makes it look easy. Uh, I watch him. He directed the first two episodes after the pilot way back in season one. And mm -hmm. he just, he makes it, he makes it look easy. I never really see him working, which, which, I mean, I mean that as a compliment. You, you don't, you don't I'm going to quote like, you with that. <laughs> Adam Bernstein. I never really see him working. Vince <laughs> Gilligan. No, he's wildly he, energetic. Like, it, yeah, just, he's yeah. very energetic. You, yeah, tireless. Yeah. Hey, you're okay with that? Yes. He handles the business, and I handle him. Clearly, we're talking about renting, not buying. You need an ongoing business, someplace you can slide in. Oh, uh, yeah, this box, is where we're... Factory. Box store. Yeah, this was a, they still this make things in America. Boxes. <laughs> yeah. And Vince, there was a particular reason why it was a, a box factory, yes? I get, yeah, I had a, I've had four jobs in my life, I think, uh, working in, you know, as a writer, uh, luckily, thank God. It's really the only thing I've ever been good at. And uh, I worked as a... Uh, I worked at a movie theater tearing tickets, and I worked at a box factory, and I was an art mover. I think it's about it, you know. But uh, I worked at a box factory for about a week in Richmond, Virginia, and it was the hardest goddamn job because you're offloading uh, cardboard from the corrugator, and it was about a million and 16 degrees in the middle of the summer and about 4,000% humidity because of this, this machinery. And uh, I was I was not tough enough to do it for more than a week, but uh, I always thought it'd be fun to get a corrugating. Now, is this a real corrugating factory, or is this because I never actually visited this set? It's a real box factory. Yeah, they, they, they construct they, boxes, but I don't know if they. Yeah, they didn't make the have cardboard. a. Yeah, they didn't That's, have a corrugator, yeah. so we had That's to have something right. sort of stand in for a while. Yeah. This is like a big die cutter or something, die cutting yeah. machine or something. But but we pretended it was a corrugator. So uh, don't so, send letters. You know all the all you all words. you young artists out there. Even the hardships that you're suffering through now can pay off later, as this scene that, that takes place. We realized love, that humidity would wouldn't work for us. Exactly. That's right. And I know Peter loved just the lights coming on and the vastness yeah. of it. Yeah. But I love Bob in that scene. Bob, Yay. you're so damn funny. Oh, scene. thanks, buddy. Look at this, the tortillas. Do you remember how remember yeah. we all ate these? Yeah. We, uh, we were fresh. We ate them they fresh. They were real tortillas. They were yeah. grabbing them off the... And they were hot, too. Wow. Well, and this so was hot. A, you could tell how hot they are coming Look up here with Aaron oh. when he grabs it. I love I love when you grab this thing. You look like you really burned yourself. <laughs> yeah. And it was initially conceived as a bakery, but actually when we were scouting with Adam Bernstein, he's like, oh, let's do something more New Mexico. That's and we found perfect. a tortilla factory. Perfect. Yeah, it was great. great. That was actually very close to the stage. Is a are those tortillas? Because they look like they had air in them. They're not flat. Yeah, they're, they, they, they haven't gone down yet. Yeah. They oh, need okay. to. Need yeah. To. yeah. They're not those And they, they flatten or? out. Yeah. No, they uh, flatten out. Oh, okay. I like this part, like part too. No. <laughs> we're not going here. I so want them to cook meth in a 
in this game. I got to think Saul's so, got some part ownership of this yeah, place. He's, he's, he's selling it hard. Yes. Yes. He keeps uh, pushing it on nicer. everybody. Every person, every client he has. Yeah. <laughs> I love this place, though. Look at that great old billboard. And yeah. and it's a real uh, exterminator, right? Actually, no. Uh, what what was it, actually? Uh, Melissa? It's a garage. Think? A garage, a garage yeah. Auto like garage. Auto <laughs> Seemed like a real auto repair we place. We transformed it, yes. Yeah. It was it wasn't operational when we found it, but it's in an area with other garages and automotive companies as well. The hammer yeah. comes down, it's gonna be Custer's last stand. Uh, they are wonderful art department, Mark Freeborn mm -hmm. and W. Gilpin, uh, who runs the construction department. What? Michael Flowers, who's our set decorator. The, the great uh, team there. Yeah. Uh, and yep. their and their various crews. Uh, great team putting all this together, making it look like it's been there for Many, many years when, when in yeah. fact, it's been there for about three days. So, wow. I love this. What show. I love about this storyline is the assumption that uh, tenting houses, houses happens in throughout the entire country and perhaps most of the world. And so as you guys are developing the story about uh, cooking meth inside the houses that are already being tented, yeah. what do we find out? Bomb the place. Go ahead. Yes. We we found out that in New Mexico uh, it is pretty much unheard of to tent a house. <laughs> oh really? Yeah. Why? yeah. I, they got different it's kind of dry. bugs there. They got they got chinch bugs there instead of uh, no. I'm just making that up. Wow. I don't know what, what no, kind of bugs they got. But that's yeah. where we'll go. They need more moisture uh, for uh, termites to, termites. to exist. They need uh -huh. they need more moisture in the uh, in the soils, and that's where they come out. They nest in the soils. They come out and then they. They, they start their, their devouring wood. But I, I, Vince, I feel like you were you were talking about this tenting idea for years before it came into the Breaking Bad story. That's true. Uh, we would. Uh, I see you do indeed see tented houses all over Southern California. Mm -hmm. You see them all the time. And I would walk from our in Burbank. I'd walk from our writers room to the Ralphs, the supermarket up the street to get lunch. Uh, and I'd keep passing these various houses along the way that were tented. First this week, there's this one, and then that one, and saw so many of them that I thought, wouldn't that be a great place to cook meth? Because it's filled with poison. No one's going to go near it because they don't want to get poisoned. Uh, it's, you know, all kinds of nefarious things could be going on inside the house while that tent is up and the tent stays up for two or three days, which is a good length of time for a meth cook. Mm -hmm. so, Sell that information to other crews. So, it's very clever. Yeah. Come back and lift the goods themselves. And you know them. And the, um, Saul's shirt matches the tent, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> yeah, the circus tent. Five years. And the colors of that tent were Breaking Bad colors. Yeah. We, we made that tent, uh, that's right, we had that uh, custom made, right? Yeah. We did indeed. Why, why did you have that custom made in, as opposed to renting existing Be tents? Because, yeah, go ahead, Melissa. No, no, you, please. Well, we, we, we saw a tent we could buy used, and having one made wasn't substantially more money. It was more money, but it wasn't substantially more, and we figured, you know, a lot of attention to, to color is, is paid on this show. Hey, look at this. Look at is this is so great. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Charlie he Baker. Really can play. Yeah, he really, yeah. He really, really can play. Yeah. I love that tilt. It's so great reveals. that you were able to use his talent. Yeah. yeah. And then also, <laughs> and, and then <laughs> his lack of talent. Comes Matt Jones. <laughs> Actually, Matt apparently is a very good guitarist. He was pretending he was not so yeah. good here. He was in a band. Man, solid. Yeah. That Yamaha and this is a real, uh, Melissa, what's the name of this place? Huge, huh? um, this mothers? is mothers, yeah, yeah. Or, or grandmas. Sorry, it's grandmas. Gra grandma, grand. I'm sorry, grandma. some relative. Yes, some. I yeah. don't know what it was. It's a female second, relative. Second cousin. Yeah, second. <laughs> this is uh, yes, an existing remote. music store in uh, Albuquerque, which let us come in and shoot for a day, which is great because it can be a little disruptive. Mm -hmm. So we're very lucky to be there. But Grandma's was very cool, and it's a good, it's a good, good place to go if you want to buy all this because this is all their stock. This is you, know, you go in there and you buy all this stuff. We brought our in our own cases. <laughs> oh, did we? We brought our own cases. <laughs> We're gonna need all. Um... Hey, man, I'm trying to do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good guys. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I'm trying to do business over here. Bitch. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, cash. Okay, hey, uh, you know what? 
I'll throw in stenciling. What's your band called? Damn, brother. Not asking no questions, but it sure looks like you're back in business. There's a cool shot coming up here. I'll try to point it out when it goes by. There's this there's this moment where Skinny Pete, as he's leaving, passes through frame between the camera and uh, Aaron here, and it was a composite. It was it was a stolen piece of footage of uh, of uh, Skinny Pete here, composited in by our wonderful uh, Diane Mercer and Bill Pulowski and our wonderful uh, post uh, folks, and uh, it just it's amazing. It's like seamless. It's coming up. Why did you have to do that? It, it just because it played a little better seeing Skinny Pete leave in the shot, right? On, keep it on, brother. Here. And it's just uh, because that shot, he was Skinny Pete was not in that shot. He and was it, around the other side of the camera. Yeah, he oh, was. Wow. Uh, he was. Uh, he, in other words, he walked around. Yes, he walked around the other side of the Unreal. camera. Unreal. But it seems wow. more proper to have it work mm. that way. Yes. Yeah. And here's our uh, first glimpse there of Jesse Plemons. Yeah, so good. Yeah, that so is so good, good man. Not a really good job. Not a change between the couch cushions, not the panties out of the He's just got that innocent, if such an innocent to look to pants, him. You, you know, tip. clean cut and innocent, and then, yeah. and then, and then. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, his calm demeanor is a really nice touch to this. He's not the hothead like uh, Aaron Paul brings to his <laughs> Every sing single one of my uh, friends who are actors were begging me to get them in to audition for that role. They wanted it so bad. We, we read some of your friends, didn't we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And some yeah. excellent, excellent actors, all of them, all of them. It's, oh, thank it's, you. I got to tell you, when we, and this has happened so many times, I can't yes, even sir. tell you, we audition folks, no, and, and it's such a, an embarrassment of riches. So many yeah. wonderful actors, male and female, have read for this show over the years, and you want to, there's been many days I've wanted to hire three or four of them for one role, but you can you can yeah. only hire one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Sharon Bialy and Sharon Tom Sherry Thomas, uh, our casting directors, bring us a, a treasure trove of talent, and uh, it, that's the difficulty is to, is to select one. It is. It is indeed. It's hard. I love how you. This is one of the last moments you two got. You, these two characters are really on the same page and respecting each other and liking each other. This is. That's good. It's. Yeah. And to see how far like, Jesse's come. Where he's yeah. really contributing he's to contributing this and plan. Contributing and has a good plan. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he has some good ideas. You know, <laughs> he does. This season's got a lot of. He came up with the train heist. Yeah, yeah. I gotta assume if you're listening to the audio commentary, you've already seen the episodes. So, spoilers are plenty here. They, uh, there was this big, big plastic hospital tent they set up inside of the. Here comes Andrea, and Brock. Uh, oh, hi. Hmm. Sorry. Great. <laughs> a fun interaction between <laughs> Rock and Walt. Yeah. Oh, great. Perfect. <laughs> this is, uh, I love this. I love how you play this, Brian. Oh, yeah. I'm Walt. I mean, I do think uh, young Ian here out acts you a little bit, but he does. <laughs> but does completely. I'm just thinking about how much poison could I give this kid? <laughs> <laughs> I wonder how much that little body can handle. <laughs> oh. yeah, something to work out. Ian's a good little actor. He's a he's a sweet kid. And of course, uh, Emily here is a wonderful actress. Emily Rios. Yeah. I got to tell you too. Every time we see this set, this is a set. This is not a real house. And and in the early episodes of Breaking Bad. When you saw scenes in this living room, they were shot in the real house. Yeah. And then, then we lost, for various reasons, too complicated to go into, we uh, we lost uh, the possibility of shooting inside the real house. But this uh, set built by W. Gilpin and his guys and, and designed by Mark Freeborn, just amazing. It's a beautiful set. <sighs> it's like, does he remember me? Yeah. yeah. I love, yeah, and look at his oh, it, eyes. I love it. It's so this ah oh, that shot. Now, how do you figure you got the poison to him, Brian? Because people talk about that a lot. 
And that's the question I was going to ask you, Vince. <laughs> we, we, I'm, we, we, and the writers of that joke about uh, the the midnight juice box man who, yes. uh, that's who right. comes, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, juice box man, yeah, come yeah. puts it in the juice box. I'm thinking ice. of a uh, maybe put it in a lollipop, a sucker. Yeah, well, maybe. Jeez, We're good. So. We're good. How are you? Something, something, a candy of some sort that he would yeah. want to yeah. go for. Mm, delicious rice and uh, delicious. Did you uh, ever? Did you ever think of 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 uh, how the the we, distribution? We did. We did. People have rightly said it's a bit improbable that he could have got there, but it's it it's not impossible. It, there was several hours there where he could have gotten over to the high the, to the elementary school and and snuck it mm -hmm. into the. And Walt, as a guy being a former teacher, knows his way around a school. I would think so. Might have gotten mm -hmm. it into the kids' juice box with a with a hypodermic or who knows what. The Frank here, uh, the guy on the uh, on the right, was I, I we we meant to get more stuff with his character in here. We never quite had the ability to uh, story wise, but this guy does a real good job. Both these guys yeah. do a real good job here. Yeah, wanted to make sure he was somebody that people would actually trust with their houses. Yeah. He does a great job bullshitting this guy. Both these guys are really good in the scene. I like this scene. Kill him dead. That's a guarantee. Hey, Melissa, where was was this near? Was this Rio Rancho where this was shot? It, yeah, right out near yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah, okay. almost. Yeah. So a suburb Which was the of kind of neighborhood we were looking for, yeah, where the houses kind of, you know, looked alike and yeah. Yeah. were you know, nice similar houses. size. Yeah. Yeah. This was out, this, so in other words, this was out near where the high school was in the pilot, right? Exactly. Sort of, yeah. yeah. And where we of. did the DEA bust in the pilot also. Right, right, right. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because we, we hadn't gotten out there for years uh, until now. Sir? Sir? I got to tell you, I know, I, don't know if, I know Peter, if he were here, would talk about the amount of work that went into picking the song that's coming up next in the meth cooking montage. Just oh, yeah? many hundreds of man hours went into Really? What song is it? It's uh, it's uh, On a Clear Day You Can See Forever, uh, which is from the, the Barbara Streisand movie of the same name, I guess. Uh, I don't know if it was a musical at first or then a movie. I don't, I don't know the uh, the genesis of, of, of how the song, you know, where it came from. But this is not, obviously, Barbara Streisand singing. This is a, uh, a British group, and I think this is from the 70s. And it's this sort of very cool, jazzy uh sort of plum toned kind of I don't I love this song it's a wonderful version of the song and it's uh with a with a Hammond B3 organ there you know mm -hmm. and uh I'm assuming that's what that is and, and it's just such a great version of the song but we went through so many uh songs before this one uh, really hit and uh and I should mention too Skip McDonald who cut this episode did a just a hellaciously good job yeah. great job all around Two comments I wanted to make on the, from the production standpoint. You're looking at selecting music. There could be a variety of costs connected to these things and permissions and all those legal oh God, yeah. loopholes you have to jump through. Yeah. And also from a practical standpoint, we did shoot inside the house. We were in that neighborhood. We didn't shoot inside the same house that was being tented, so that could be, that we could focus on the exterior of one and the interior of another. It's why we needed houses that looked alike, that um, look just alike for production then, yeah. purposes. So in other words, this is a real house interior down the street from the tented exterior. Yeah, just across the street, down just a couple houses. Mm-hmm. That's cool. And Mark Freeborn had to reconceive, and Bjorn, um, who was set designing for him, had to re art directing for him, had to reconceive the cook chain for this new style of cook. So, right. you know, a lot of planning went into that. <laughs> hey, hey, Melissa, talk about this this footage here. Do you, you remember where this came from? Yeah. Uh, well, actually, I think you probably do a, a better job, but I, I think this is Andrew Ortner, who's our associate producer. Um, this was conceived by Adam Bernstein. He thought it would be, he's done montages on our show before, and he thought it would be really cool to take it to another level and add sort of an animation kind of, uh, you know, a third dimension to it, a fourth dimension to it. 
That's right. That, well, we're going to animate it ourselves, but then we found that, that piece there. We found it on the on YouTube. Uh, some artist had made it, I think, in, I want to say in, in, in uh, somewhere in uh, Nor Norway or, or Denmark or someplace, uh, Scandinavia, and we reached out and, and licensed it, just put it in, cut it in, which was a lot easier than animated it ourselves. Yeah. Really talented artists who were very happy or interested in being a part of our show. Yeah, I'm sorry if I got it wrong where he's from, but he's a very talented guy, clearly. And I think there might have been two of them. Uh, it might have been two different folks, right. yeah. This scene is, this is great, great yeah, because planting, planting. No, giving him great advice, mm. guiding him, helping him guide himself to his life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If you'd only heed that advice. So selfless. Right. Selfless, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Melissa. <laughs> yeah, this is uh, that part where it's like, it's a little too dangerous how close he's getting to this woman. And so he's trying to manipulate Jesse into breaking up with her. <laughs> this is beautifully played, both of you guys. I love this scene. And then the clip from uh, Three Stooges, uh, Adam Adam and I share a love for the Three Stooges. We were going to use that clip originally in uh, like the second or third episode ever in season one. Oh yeah, uh, we went we went with another uh, we went with another clip instead. Uh, there's because there's a Three Stooges pop in like episode two or three. I can't remember which one. This this was our second choice, and then we got to use it uh, in this episode. Something, but then she can make a pretty good guess. This is not a set, right? This is that same house interior. Same house, mm -hmm. yeah. Gotcha. Same house. Was this all in one a... day, or was it... yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm one day? Yeah. Wow. So that's you know, on a television schedule, you have to be really economical in your time and locations, and so, um, and that's why the two houses really helped us because art department was able to get in there, set it up, uh, get everything ready. Uh, so that they're not in the way when we're shooting the exterior of the other shot. So nice. they specifically didn't want to be next door, wanted to be across the street, a few uh, houses down to give everybody a little separation. Right. Experience, please. Yeah, I think one of the challenges was seeing if we could fit everything we needed to in a practical yeah. house. But and we we looked at you know at, at putting it on the stage, but it, it all came together really nicely in, in on location. It sure did. Really nicely. So one day of work is uh, exterior tinted house, driving up. Uh, the guy is snowing the other, the homeowner, and then and then you guys arrive, and then all that entire cook sequence with the montage to the music, and then and then this scene. All of that one day of shooting. Correct. Yeah, one Jeez. day. That's a lot of damn work. Mm. It it to us it is, and I I don't know that that fans would realize that you know. I think we did some of the interior tent stuff on stage though. Did we? No, I, just the stuff where you couldn't no. tell where you were. Yeah. 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 yeah that probably and that was sense. a good decision too. So that to make the the plastic milky, so that it's translucent, but not yeah. transparent. And so we can actually, if we had to pick up shots, we could take that tent inside our stages and shoot it, and no one would know. Good mm -hmm. point. More good point. Ah, uh, these two. There's another ladies. secret. <laughs> There's another secret. So this is actually a set on our stages. And we make it look like that on the outside of these windows, we, we roll a car into the uh, stage and we have this, you know, circled around. So it looks like we're there. That's right. right. And you got to take all the gasoline out of a car before you can roll it into the building. You got to empty the tank. You got to take the battery out. You got to do all the stuff yeah. for the fire department. So, yeah. uh, Anna, so was this a fun one? <laughs> yeah, it was. It was. It's the first time. Skylar ever. Okay, thanks for she she uh, she's always had a, a a great degree of patience with Marie, and I think she's at the place where she finally can't take it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I love this scene. This is a great one. Yeah, it's great. Did you lose your voice? How many times did you have to scream "Shut up" that day? Quite a few times. Quite a few. Not not that many, but I mean, you know, enough. But it's so funny because she's so you know. Betsy's so funny, and she's just got no idea. She's just trying to be helpful yeah. all the time. <laughs> Marie's just, just trying to be helpful. <laughs> Giving good advice. 
Skylar really is long suffering with Marie because, like you said, Marie means well, but Skylar, Skylar has has the patience of Job sometimes, except except on this day. I'm on this day, yeah, yeah, not a good day for. Her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I am. Um... I don't think we're going to do anything. I love the look earlier where she was banging on the glass and the guy turns around. I don't think the guy knew. I thought, I don't think he had been the actor that extra had been told what she was going to do. Yeah. <laughs> like, Why is that what's... woman banging on the window? <laughs> what am I doing wrong? Problems with Walt. Why he wouldn't come to the house when we were all practically begging, whatever, water under the bridge. But at this point, every year is precious. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you don't smoke? You haven't smoked since college. You can't be serious with the baby and Walt. Skylar, you're not smoking around the baby, are you? And you can't. How many cigarettes? It's just relentless. Quite a few. <laughs> Quite a few. Oh, look at her just. Force your employees to breathe secondhand smoke. I know for a fact that that for is illegal. For a fact, it's illegal. <laughs> Shut up. What? I'm sorry. Please don't speak to me like that. I am simply saying that you. Will can't you shut up? Your... Hey. Shut the hell up. Shut up. Shut up, Skyler. Shut up. Please shut up. Stop. I shut up. Shut up. <laughs> That's how the audience feels watching the <laughs> DVD with the commentary. <laughs> you know, you can turn it off, guys. If you... <laughs> I love the touch of putting it in the uh, coffee mug. Was that your idea? That was good. I like that. I think so. It may have been Adams. I love the bug here. I love how he hangs his uh, ass over the edge there. Yeah. How many What's takes his was name? That we did roaches it. Did it a bunch of times. God, he was good. Five. We they used him again. Several, <laughs> brought in several used, different. That roach worked Nugs. out so well. We it's brought so him back. It's so sad because they put him up there, and then it would just fall down to the ground. Oh, yeah? And then they just redo it. The bug had no idea what was happening. Roaches are stupid. you got to know how to handle these things. We bring him back. That roach <laughs> reappears in episode 509, and he does a fantastic mm. job. <laughs> that's oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah, a little, a little, uh, sp a little teaser for uh, five oh nine there. Yeah, you might see that roach again at five oh nine. That's a great. Uh, that's yeah, a great, great segue. Transition. Yeah. yeah, transition. Great one. This is a fun scene. I like this scene a lot. Yeah, I'm so shocked play this to hear that. Like... Yeah. I, I just immediately think something's wrong. Yeah. Right? And it is. Yeah. I guess, yeah. How you doing? Where's Skylar? Now, y'all play this very nicely. It's just, uh, it's such a pleasure working with all you guys because you, we can write anything we want. And, and, and this is, I mean, it, it's a real, I've been on shows. I've been on movies or shows or whatever where you got to think twice about how you, impart the information to the audience because you, you sometimes you got a situation where you say you might say to yourself and you hate to say it, but you might say to yourself you know we got an actor who i'm not sure they can pull this off you know and uh we never ever ever with any of you guys we never think that we never say oh this big emotional scene or, or this bit of silent uh you know uh, a bit of moment of silence that nonetheless imparts information you know we never say oh they're never going to be able to put that over and it's just been liberating for us writers to be able to just come up with any damn thing we can think of uh, and, and, and often as, as often as not try to come up with the things that sell the information without coming out and saying it. Like, oh, I'm happy. Oh, I'm sad. Oh, I'm conflicted. Just let, let you guys say it through your eyes and your expressions and, and, and not through dialogue as often it's time to tell me as, often as not. So thank you guys for all, all you guys for, for that, what you bring to the priceless stuff you bring to the show. Thanks for the part. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We were, you know, thanks for the trust no, and the opportunity to do that. No, we were, you know, we are, we are lucky. Brian and Aaron waving those Emmys around. And you guys carry them <laughs> everywhere uh, uh, you Why go? did you have to bring it to the audio I commentary? That's what it is. <laughs> 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 oh, right. Uh, and the sad word really You're hurts. afraid they'll yes. be stolen. Is that it? <laughs> if you leave them at home. I needed a paperweight. <laughs> yeah. Swore you'd need it today. You just had a feeling you need them today. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. What? Is that they're, wrong? they're talismans. I tell you what. We, me, you sometimes we, you go somewhere and you forgot your Emmy and you're like, oh, great. Yeah. Well, it's like so no, it's you protect yourself. Yeah. 
<laughs> no, you walk into a restaurant without a reservation. You put the award That's on right. the on the yeah. you know the desk and say, "Are there any seats available anywhere for <laughs> me right. and my friend here?" <laughs> 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 it is so masterful how Walt turns the scene around. Oh, though it is, I mean, yeah. let's just start oh. to gauge how. Oh, she needs to have get uh, some nugget of information. Yes, and I have to give her something. Oh God, yeah. I'm going to throw Ted Beneke under the bus. <laughs> I'm going to throw <laughs> Skyler. Skyler. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I love her expression here too. Just like, it's like overwhelmed. I love the hug coming up. This very awkward hug that comes up at the end. Here. Yeah. This perfunctory. Gee, I better hug him. Kind of a moment. I don't want anything to think less of her or me. Because yeah, Marie loves gossip we, and she loves, it, but it's just too much. She just does not want all this information yeah, yeah. right now. She. That reminds me of the did. time that Betsy visited her writer's room and bought a bunch of, of milk and cookies and porn. <laughs> How did that not come up? Yeah. <laughs> she oh, milk, her kids are going to hear this years from now and they're going to go. Porn. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, that's yeah, she that's my mom. She bought all these magazines uh, cuz she figured we needed stuff to, you know, uh distract herself. <laughs> and then and then she just bought them at some at some uh, uh quick stop place and then and then she puts them down and we're like and then she like opens one and then she went, "Oh, Jesus." <laughs> I think uh, she was picturing Playboy from the 1950s. Right. Is the one would be insane. <laughs> I did the same thing. Hilarious. I brought you guys the same stuff, except I forgot the milk and cookies. <laughs> <laughs> but it was so, it was, uh, I loved her reaction because she just thought it'd be like, like Cute that Marilyn funny. Monroe cheesecake yes. or something. It's, <laughs> instead, it's like, you know, like, you know. Oh, uh, porn has really the turned the corner. <laughs> Taking a bite out of the world. What maybe. happened to porn? <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. That was cute. Yeah, I love this scene too. <laughs> Seeds of doubt. Happy Emily family and Ian, moments. Really great family. And the Emily and Ian are just as cute as they be together. They really do look like uh, mom yeah. and son. Yeah. Together. Hey, you okay? <laughs> Yeah. That quick POV shot we got with a digital SLR really in the editing room of of in Burbank, California. That's a shot of the wall of the editing room with a with a This with whole a, thing is a, a lie. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and uh, God bless uh, Al Pacino. Al Pacino was, uh, none of us talked to him or anything, but he was so cool about this. He could, like any any movie star, any actor uh, can can nix their appearance. If, you know, you, you call up and say, hey, can we use a clip from Scarface? Al Pacino could have said no, but he was very, very cool about it, apparently. And uh, it was such a treat to be able to have finally, because uh, uh, the pitch on this show has always yes. been, we're going to take Mr. Chips and turn him into Scarface. So finally we get Scarface on the show. It was well, a... we got to see a clip of Mr. Chips. Hey, you know, you're right. we got to get Mr. Chips got to get there. that in. you got <laughs> not oh, much time left. Not much time left. You're, you're breaking the you're, final episode. You're right. That's a good It'll point. I love that baby Holly is watching <laughs> yeah. Scarface. Yeah. <laughs> and they're just... No. Say a lot to my little friend. And they're laughing and just... Yeah. Skyler, yeah. yeah. That's awful. Another great transition with the machine gun that's, and that. That's a great transition. Yeah. <laughs> this this money scene, counter. this scene with the money. You, oh, you and I felt so bad and, for Banks. And there's oh, yeah. intense calculus used in this scene. It just, it just in took scene so too. long to. I mean, he had to remember exactly how many. And how many like, he's taken from what? Oh, yeah, yeah, how many things he, you know, and when he was taking it and. Well, I mean, and he's not good at math. Yeah, yeah. So yeah most, he's horrible most, at math. Most actors did not get into it for the math. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank God Adam Bernstein is like a math is a math genius because he like, he was sitting there with calculations and the table working it out ahead of time. Yeah. He is actually Adam is some kind of math genius. He really is. And his dad was a mathematic is a mathematics professor, I believe. Is that is that correct? I, think, I believe correct. so. Yeah. 
It has yeah. truthiness to it. Yeah, yeah. Stephen Colbert would say. <laughs> truthiness. <laughs> but I got to tell you, uh, the amount of conversations I had with Peter Gould, who wanted, who was very persnickety about getting the math right here, and and so thanks to Peter and to Adam, they really busted their butts because Peter would say, "I think the calculations are thus," and he would say, "Explain this amount of money and this," and I was just my eyes would glaze over. I said, "You know, just I, I trust you. Just go with God on that one. I'll, I believe you." My supplier and I came to an agreement. Yeah. The methylamine is free this And so if we did get the math wrong, uh, I, I, uh, that, that, I had nothing to do with it. <laughs> Can we continue, or you got any more burning questions? You uh, guys are so good. All three of you guys are so okay, damn yeah, good in this scene. You fronted us 120 to get us going. I always ask this about length, but how long, again, was this a day's work, or was this half a day's work, or what? Half, half day. Mm. Half day. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, we we shoot everything wow. by by location. Yeah. So, the earlier shots that we saw in the garage there were booked for the same day or the same couple of days back to back, so that we move our trucks less and we set up shop and we're able yeah. to get this done. And after each you. take, our our property department comes in and they have to restack and remake sure everything is exactly perfect the way it was before. Yeah, right. So, Cut. I gotta tell you, fake money is a big damn deal too, as far yeah. as props go. Well, it's, it looks it looks very real. I mean, the yeah. paper is faked. Yeah. But the and and seems like it's a scaled down a little bit, or at least the image is scaled. Maybe not. It the very it looks very real. Good. No, I'm glad. But how do you get that right? The rights to do that. It's there's a company. Our our Mark Hansen, our prop, and, and Melissa can probably speak as much about this. Uh, but our I, I believe our Mark Hansen, our prop master, has to rent it from Los Angeles. And it there's uh there's there's like rules cheap. about. That's not <laughs> cheap either. There's like it's a company a, it, that has the license to make it or whatever. Or, is that do you know any more about it than that? Melissa? Yeah, yeah. I mean, because you you can't photograph real money and. At all that we do, some don't. It's uh, it's frowned upon by the yeah. U.S. Treasury. No, we don't do any. It is to be no, obscure. We do yeah, we don't do that. We, we wouldn't. We, we don't do it. We would never do that. <laughs> and by the way, that's a that's an, like an archaic rule because photographing money that that law dates back to the fifties or something when before they had they thought it was steal money's souls. <laughs> yes, <laughs> don't steal the soul. Yeah, steal Ben Franklin's soul. <laughs> <laughs> We had a tribal leader for. Uh... <laughs> you know, I guess photocopiers now have software built into them. So if you try to, if you try to photocop, color photocopy a, a bill, it'll like it won't work. You know, you or can't do it. It'll and next they'll have Wi-Fi built in. It'll just call the Treasury Department directly on you. So. This is business. Kind of big brotherish. So this is where the stacks get small, right? Yeah. Splitting them up. The legacy costs. A little too oh small for God. Walt's tastes. Like, well, it's too small for my taste. I'm watching this going, forget that. That's very nice of Jesse to offer up his money. You know. He's a problem solver. Yeah. Jesse he is. He's just such a, such a good guy. Why are you such a schmuck? <laughs> Why are you giving away your money? <laughs> Let these two guys fight it out, and then they kill each other, and then you keep all of it. You're not thinking and, and ahead this was, there. This episode is the first time we shot in this office, and we were thinking ahead. You know, you, the writers had let us know about things that were going to go on in this office in later episodes, so we had to set up for those things here. Right. We had to set up for the, where the radiator specifically was mm -hmm. so that Walt could be uh, 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 strapped to it uh, in the later episode. And where the coffee maker would be and water would be. and Exactly. Exactly right. That's why it's 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 priceless. It, it, we could not do this show if we didn't have the amount of lead time to come up with these episodes. You have to write the whole thing we, way in advance. You, unfortunately, we never get it all written in advance, right. but we have to conceive of it in advance and, and have it all. And we've 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 been very lucky with our lead time, and we've we've made, in the scheme of things, not that many mistakes where we've had to go back and redo stuff, right. which I'm very grateful for. I love this shot. A beautiful shot. Tomorrow. I love how fast the clouds are moving too. You can you can watch them move as you sit here. And you can see the ominous billboard. I, I hope the audience is not watching the clouds move while they're watching <laughs> the scene. That's true. You guys so are nice. You get, 
You guys, it's hard to take uh, your eyes off you two guys. Broke it off with Andrea. Was there a big sound issue here? Because right on the other side of the trees in the distance is a major road, right? Is that? Yeah, there's a, an right intersection. It's the right thing yeah. to happen. You know, I meant this. I remember sound-wise, this was a little tricky. Yeah. You're looking at yeah, it wrong. I mean, we, because we shoot on location all over the city, you know, our sound team works with a lot of <laughs> challenging sound circumstances. So I, I don't think this is among the worst. But um, uh, Production sound mixer, Daryl Frank. Yeah, and our, and our wonderful yeah. team in Burbank, too, who cleans, yeah. cleans everything up. Cleans it up. They're the cleaners. We call them the cleaners. Have Jeffrey and Eric are mixers. Of, uh, yeah. The cleaner, yes, Nick Jeffrey Forshager. and Eric and Nick Forshager and Catherine and Catherine the, the whole team there. I'm sure yeah, the whole, whole team there. Did. Yeah, it is windy as hell, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. And you kind of, from cut to cut, you kind of see it changing a little bit. You, there's no way around that sometimes. That's so why it's uh, pretty important that our actors are so talented. Yes, so so that you can't take your eyes off them and, and yeah. be looking instead of that tree in the yeah. far left there, moving around. This is just what am I saying there? Scares Jesse. You, you're essentially saying, you know, maybe Mike at some point uh, might have to die. Is essentially in so many words what you're saying. You're saying that I I know now why Gus cut Victor's throat. He was he was, uh, you know, Victor uh, got a little too full of himself and and. You know, flew a little too close to the sun, and and maybe yeah. uh, maybe that's the same good deal. Good advice, with, uh, I gotta say. Yeah. Very good, good sound <laughs> advice. I love that shot. I love that last shot. Great job, Adam Bernstein. Great yeah. job, yeah. Peter Gould. Great yeah. job, Skip. Who cut? Great yeah. job, all you guys. Yeah. Excellent, that's excellent. Thanks. Oh, thank you. Great job, everybody. Thanks for watching, everybody. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.